Tim, what can you say about what's occurred? I mean, what, what, what can you say? I mean, it's, it's a terrible situation and terrible facts. And, you know, it's, it's domestic violence is a terrible problem. And uh, you know, everybody deserves to be treated fairly and have value and be respected. And this is a terrible case. Uh, for Tim, Tim. Drew, Drew was just saying that his client, there's no proof that his client was even there. She said that my ex killed me or hurt me, and he said it might be another ex. Well, I mean, we won't be trying the case here today. I mean, Drew's a very good lawyer, but we're going to make sure we deal with all the facts like we always do, and I'm confident that we have the right person. Would you say the evidence is strong? I, I would say that it's, it's, a, it's, it's a solid case, and I would say that, you know, obviously the state police have been working on it for the last three days in conjunction with the Montreal police, and I think. Uh, they work really hard and they're really good at what they do. Are you alleging we have a stabbing and a shooting and a bludgeoning here, all, all of it? Well, I, I think that was set forth in the medical examiner's report uh, or the information that we had. It was definitely a stabbing and a shooting, uh, and uh, we're, we're going to continue to look and see what the other injuries are consistent with. And you Tim. didn't really talk about it yesterday, but I mean, some of these details yeah, are just okay. like, like, unbelievable. They really are, and I, I think you know they, they speak for themselves. And like I said, I mean, these are always uh, terrible, tragic cases, and I feel so much for the family that has to go to court and listen to these terrible facts. Chief Tavares, how would you say your community is doing after this? It was really quite a blow, wasn't it, for Marshfield? Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, this. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what to say other than you know he's purely evil and just committed an extreme, atrocious act of domestic violence. And it just illustrates why next month is Domestic Violence Awareness National to you know bring light to these issues. I mean, this this is just a horrible, horrible case. Is there any indication of harassment before this? Well, I think there's going to be information that's going to come out regarding the relationship and the, the history of the relationship. I'm sure that will come at some point. But what all that we're going to be talking about today is what's in the and we think that's what's appropriate. And now that we're in the situation that he's been sent to Bridgewater for 20 days. Master Law Chapter 123 and and there'll be an examination, and there'll be uh, maybe an event spot to see what that you can do at the end of that 20 days or, or thereafter. So, no, Master. Well, Chief, you were talking yesterday about how you documented that he was in town when he said he was collecting cans. I mean, how crucial would that be in case? Well, I think it puts him in the area right near the father's house uh, days before, skulking around the area wearing camouflage in the rain. I think that uh, that's a, an important piece. Pretty good work by the police here within 24 hours getting everybody. Uh, I, I commend all the agencies, the district attorney's office, the state police, all the local authorities. I mean, it, it was just uh, unbelievable how uh, he was captured within 24 hours. And it, was, it was great that there's nobody else been hurt. I mean, that's that's a big thing, trying to make sure that people don't get hurt. The, the police officers are doing an incredible job in the community, and um, it, it's a dangerous job. Anything can happen. And I think they, when you look at you know the, the officer over at Whitman and he ended up making the arrest. I mean, that was a relatively mundane call for him, and all of a sudden, uh, he grows into something where he's making an arrest of a person who's alleged homicide. So, uh, police never know what they're going to face every day. Uh, they had uh, some significant information. Uh, the state police and like the Montreal police, and everybody that's involved in this, uh, I really commend them all because I think that uh, they probably made sure that less people. Tim, was he charged with stealing the truck? I'm a little confused about what happened at the Dunkin' Donuts. What went down there? Well, I mean, uh, the facts were, were, were said in court. Right now, the only allegation out there is homicide. But what will happen is, in any case, it's going to end up in Superior Court. It'll work its way through the, the grand jury system, and we'll end up with whatever the, whatever the charge is going to be uh, when we have a. You think he to took the truck? He didn't have. He wasn't supposed to be. Right. No. No. There, there's my, my the information that we have at this point was not voluntarily given to him to be driving around the town with. So therefore, uh, there, there very well could be additional charges, and they're very well might. You presented in court that uh, his mother may have suggested that he would per possibly be susceptible of doing something like that because of the history of their relationship. His lawyer said that you guys trumped that up. What do you say to that? Well, I don't go around trumping things up, but uh, once again, I'm not going to be trying the case out here in the, in the hallway after an arraignment. We're going to do our job, and our job is to make sure we get to the end of the, at the, end of the road and that we get just results for everybody. My job right now through my office, through Jessa Lumber, and through the Montreal Police and the State Police, is to get justice for this young woman who was brutally murdered and beaten in the towns of Montreal. And were there any other complaints aside from this one skulking around the area from either the victim or her family in the days when it was before? You know, I, I don't have any information on that at this point, but like I said, this, this event only happened less than 48 hours back. And I think we're going to continue to work it and uh, get as good as possible to put ourselves and the light was favorable to make sure that we get justice. Chief, does, does the evidence suggest that he forced her car off the road? 
I, I, you know, the, the investigation is ongoing. We're still uh, putting all the pieces of the puzzle together, but there's plenty of probable cause that indicates, you know, he committed serious, heinous crimes. I mean, it, it, it sounds like what Jessica said in court. He stabbed her, he shot her, and he ran her over. That's what, is the, that invest accurate? That's what the investigation has revealed thus, thus far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.